Therefore, this starts with verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. So it's talking about, you know, you've there's a whole slew of people who have lived this life, who have walked out faith, and they're there cheering you on. And we've got their lives as examples. And it says, because we have all these examples, let us strip off. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Why? So that we could run the race that God has set for before us with endurance, with perseverance. So tonight, we're going to talk about the spirit of heaviness. And this was not something that I had in my mind and my heart to talk about. But my heart has been very heavy in the last week. And this morning, I was just praying and walking. And I just asked God, I said, Lord, I just my heart feels so heavy. And immediately I thought about the spirit of heaviness. And I don't know if you've heard that term before, but it's from Isaiah 61. And I just um, want to read that to you. So Isaiah 61 is written by the prophet Isaiah. And it's, it's talking, first it's prophetically talking about Jesus and his ministry, what he's going to do when he comes to this world. And he's going to set us free. And so that's the first part of the verse. It's talking about what Jesus is going to do, what he did for us on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. But it also talks about, you know, how he's going to exchange a spirit of brokenness and a spirit of grief and take things that are just ashes in our life and make them beautiful. And this was originally written to the, the Israelites but it applies to us today because we see it again in, in the book of Luke, in the Gospels. And Jesus is talking about, you know, who he is and what he came to do. And he came for all people, for the whosoevers, for everybody. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. And, and he says, come to me, all who are weary and laden. There's that spirit of heaviness again. And, you know, it's just God doesn't want us going through life burdened. And feeling like we can't go on. But that's exactly what Satan wants us to do. And even, you know, we, there's a lot of debate and a lot of, a lot of um, discussion in the, in the Christian world about how much authority Satan can have over you. The thing is, God has given us authority over all things. But we as Christians can open doors to Satan. We can believe the lie that he tries to sell us. We can, we can step into fear instead of living in faith. And when we do that, he jumps on our back like a monkey on our back and he starts putting heavy burdens on us. It might be guilt. It might be shame. But tonight I want to read this Isaiah 61 and we're going to talk about an actual spirit of heaviness. If you've never done studies on the spirit world and, and you, some people can get in and just get really so focused on that that they lose sight of Jesus. I'm not advocating that. But I went through my whole life not realizing that there was a battle for my mind. There was a battle for my soul. And I just thought once I was a believer in Jesus Christ, that that was it. I went to church. I believed in Jesus. I accepted him as my savior. As a young child, I, I walked the aisles of my, my Baptist church. I got baptized and I thought that was it. And so I went through life. I would go to church. I would pray. But in my day-to-day -day life, I didn't realize that there was a lot going on. And what Satan really did not want was for me to grasp, first of all, how much God loved me. Second, that he had a plan and a purpose for my life. I was so afraid of that plan and purpose. He just distorted it in my mind. I didn't think I could trust God. I thought for sure I was a disappointment to him, that I could never live up to the expectations in his word. And so I just went through life believing in him, but not drawing close to him. I didn't really understand that that was even a thing, that it was even possible. But when I finally realized that, and for me, if you've watched the first um, episode that we did of More Monday many, many weeks ago, I talked about how I came to realize that God wanted a relationship with me. And for me, it was when I got to the bottom of a health crisis, you know, I was kind of laying down. And I, I just was out of commission of, from life, from doing everything that I had always been doing. I'd been a professional athlete for many, many decades at that point, and I couldn't do that anymore. And my world was shaken, and I started drawing close to God for the first time in my life, seeking help from him. 
And then as I drew close to him in his word and started praying and seeking him more, what happened was Satan didn't like it. You know, he had already lost my soul for eternity because the Bible says when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that you are saved for all of eternity. It's not your good works that save you. You're saved by faith. You're saved by believing in Jesus. But I, like I said, I had no idea that he wanted a relationship. And when I came into that relationship, I had no idea that there was an actual enemy named Satan and a whole legion of, of demonic spirits that wanted, that sought after to kill, steal, and destroy me. And it says in John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and to have it more abundantly. But the enemy comes that he would steal, kill, and destroy you. That's, that's his goal. In our ministry, in his wakes, we always say, victory comes when you get off the dock. When you move out into that, that world where it's a little bit over your head and you connect with the power source and you learn and you go and you put your faith in that power source, which we're talking about God here. Well, Satan doesn't want you getting off the dock. He wants you to stay there. So he condemns you. He brings guilt and shame. He brings fear. He brings all the things that we've been talking about over the weeks, an offended spirit. You know, he, he causes you to be um, hurt. So that you will then react in a way that, that God didn't intend and you open a door for Satan and he just jumps in. And one way that he jumps in is through the spirit of heaviness. So I've been referring to Isaiah 61. Let's read it real quick. So it's Jesus, um, it's prophetically talking about Jesus. And Isaiah says, the spirit of the son. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his glory. So the New Living Translation is a little bit different than the New King James and King James, which actually refers to it as he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so in the New Living, it says he will give um, a festive praise instead of despair. So what is a spirit of heaviness? Well, the spirit, a spirit of heaviness is not like a feeling of sadness, a feeling of, oh, I might be depressed. I'm a little low. It's not a feeling. It's an actual spirit that hovers over you, that comes. And, and I learned in my research today, because I just found out this morning, this is what I want to talk on tonight. It was like all the different commentaries all agreed on one thing, that this spirit of heaviness doesn't just affect, it, it can just affect one person but it can affect a whole household. It can affect, when that spirit of heaviness comes on, it can affect everybody around you. It can affect a whole city, a whole state, a whole nation. And I dare to say that our nation and our world is, un I thought it was really Southern world. <laughs> our world is under a spirit of heaviness. Where does the spirit of heaviness come from? It comes from the enemy. What is that spirit of heaviness? Well, we already said spirit, it, that word spirit in the Hebrew is, it's an actual spirit. Just like we have a spirit man in us, God is a spirit, angels are spirit, there are demonic activities and they, they bring spirits of fear, they bring spirits of depression, they bring spirits of anxiety, they bring spirit of heaviness spirits of guilt and shame. There's a lot, like read through the Bible and you'll say, it'll, it'll say something about it. God does not give you a spirit of fear. No, who does Satan? He wants you afraid. He wants you on the dock. So the spirit of heaviness, it's, it's this, a spirit that comes upon you to make you feel defeated, to make you feel weighed down. And so I did some research today on the Hebrew word and I can't pronounce it, <laughs> but it's like, oh, ruash or something. I'm so sorry. I should have looked that up. But it means 
it's like a spirit of darkness. It's a spirit of heaviness. It's where things become dull and dim and there's no color. Maybe you look at the world and you just don't see life anymore. It's where it, it's a picture of, and there was other scriptures that use this same word. So it's a scripture of your eyesight going dim. And so I've, I've got some verse references here. In 1 Samuel 2, it talks about Eli, Eli's eyesight going dim and becoming dull so he can't see. So the spirit of heaviness makes it so your eyes, you can't see. You can't see the goodness of God. You can't see him at work. He's there, but Satan is bringing that spirit of heaviness to cloud your vision. Also, to stop, stuff up your ears, stop them up, to plug them up. And so um, ears are heavy. In Isaiah 6.10 and Isaiah 59.1, it talks about the, the, the spirit of heaviness brings a dullness of your ear so you can't hear. And it also was a reference to when people had leprosy, when leprosy was at the final stages, it would, um, well, actually when they got healed, people got healed of leprosy, it would start to turn white and it would lose its color. And so that word is the same word of something just losing its color. It's color. It's like the world is without color. You can't hear anything good. You can't hear the voice of God, or at least that's what you feel like. You can't see. It's like the very life of you is being snuffed out. It's also a picture of a candle, um, of actually a, a reed that is going out. It's been on fire, and now it's just, the fire's gone out, and it's just a little bit of smoke. And so that's the picture of heaviness. Have you ever felt like you're heavy? I'm not talking about overweight and bloated. I'm talking about a spiritual heaviness and there's different reasons i mean we can look around with covid 19 and we can feel we we sit, turn on the tv this is how satan brings fear and discouragement and puts on us a heavy a spirit of heaviness where we feel like there is no hope the world is just going to hell in a handbasket that that we're never going to come out of this well, I'm here to tell you that God is not quarantined and God is at work. And it says, you know what? I see what's going on. He, he is not heavy. He is not dull. He is not, he can't, it's not that his eyes are blinded. He sees it. He sees it all and he is at work. But Satan wants to convince us that, that we're on our own. And that's just not true. So I, I wrote down some things today as I was thinking about the spirit of heaviness, it's got some friends. When Satan brings a spirit of heaviness on you, he brings the friends of spirit of, re of rejection. So you feel rejected and, and you start to think, well, nobody loves me. You remember that song? Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to eat some worms. That's what we kind of fall into. Nobody loves me. And if we just get heavy, I'm alone, I'm isolated. He brings a spirit of fear and we get like this heavy spirit of fear and we feel like we get anxious with this anxiety. Our spirit gets crushed. He brings um, a spirit of hate. He wants us to be offended and all of that so that we become heavy with this, with this spirit that just blinds us and makes everything just seem awful. Well, the Bible talks very clearly how we can get rid of that spirit of fear, not uh, spirit of fear, spirit of heaviness. Um, let me tell you what the goal is. When Satan tries, when he comes in and brings that spirit of heaviness, here's the goal. And it's a lot of D words. <laughs> he wants to distract you. Remember, his goal is to keep you on the dock. He does not want you to get out, out in the water with God. He does not want you going with God. You may have put your faith and trust in Jesus, but he's like, I don't want you going with him. I don't want you drawing close to. I don't want him. I don't want you trusting him. I don't want you getting off and stepping out in the new territory and learning that you can have faith in him and he won't fail you. That's not what I want you to, to experience. So uh, yeah, I always say when I'm talking to people, there's when I learned to water ski, my, my mom and my dad taught me these two words. They said, say, hit it to the power source. I could get in the water, but the boat driver wasn't going until I said, hit it. 
Well, it's the same thing with God. We can be connected to God, the power source, through our faith in Jesus Christ. It's like the boat driver threw out a rope to us and we picked it up. But unless we say, hit it, God, he's not going. He is a gentleman. He's not going to drag us through the lake of life. And so we got to be ready to go. Well, again, the goal is for of Satan is to put a spirit of heaviness on us that will distract us. He, he'll send people. He'll, he'll confuse us. He'll send lies in our thought processes. So he wants to distract us. He wants to discourage us. He wants us to feel despair and dismayed. That's why so often, in the, especially in the Old Testament, God would, would show up and he would say to Joshua, hey, don't let your heart be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Be strong. Be courageous. For I, the Lord your God, am with you wherever you go. Because it's so easy to just start getting weighed down with fear, to be discouraged, to be dismayed, to be despondent, to be um, just, I always said, distracted, defeated. He wants our faith decreased. He wants our joy diminished. At all these D words, I'm so proud of myself today. <laughs> he wants us disappointed. He wants us to doubt. He just wants us to go through life numb. And I've talked to people recently, a loved one, and I said, you know, or how are you? And, and this person's like, I just feel nothing. And the Lord showed me today that this person has a spirit of heaviness on them. I have had a spirit, a spirit of heaviness on me. I've just felt a little bit of loss. I'm not saying I'm in, in depression and all of that, but that's where Satan would like me to be. But I've noticed, I've just felt, even my friend Pat today who's moderating this, he goes, I've just noticed you're just not yourself. And I've, I've kind of felt that way. One of the reasons I haven't been in the Word. I'm just going to be honest with you. The last week, week and a half, it's like before more Mondays, I've been cramming. <laughs> Today, I just had a wonderful day. I just like, Lord, I just want to learn about the spirit of heaviness because that's what I feel like. But then I had a friend die last week and a spirit of heaviness came on my heart. And one is called grief, but I also had a spirit of heaviness for my loved ones, my friends who are hurting. And so when you start to feel a spirit of heaviness, another thing I learned in my, in my study today is that sometimes God allows you to feel that because he's wanting you to what someone else feels so that you can pray for them, so that you can intercede for them. So when you're starting to feel this heaviness, you need to discern. You need to ask the Holy Spirit, give me discernment to know. Is this, have I opened a door for the enemy in some way, God? Am I, am I holding on to fear and anxiety? Have I, have I not been in the word and, and given the devil a place in my mind and opened a door? I, I remember one night I, this thought came in my mind and it was just random, but I kind of thought about it for a second. And then I thought about what if that happens? And the minute I agreed that that could happen, it was like the spirit jumped on me. I, I, I popped up. I remember I was laying down in Tim's lap. We were watching TV and this thought crossed my mind. I kind of agreed with it. And I just set up <gasps> like that. And he's like, what? And I'm like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> but it was that fast, that fast that I agreed with this absurd lie, this, this thing that was really something I would fear in life. And I thought about it for a minute. I thought, what if that happens? And I opened up a door and he just jumped in and he, he, he wants to be on your back. He wants to weight you down. So what is the answer? How can we close the door? Well, like I said, we, we need to know. We need to have discernment to know, God, have I opened a door in some way? Have I, have I had an offended spirit? Have I um, sought the, 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 the approval of man and I, I'm just running after people trying to be approved of and now I'm rejected and I just feel loneliness and the spirit of heaviness? So if we have opened a door, if we have been walking in sin and it's kind of, we've opened it, Satan's come in, he's, like I said, jumped on our back with all these burdens. Maybe we've been walking in fear and not faith. We've been like making commitments and all these kind of things. And we've brought a lot on us. We need to repent. We need to ask God, God, forgive me. I agree with you that I shouldn't have done with these things, but now I'm going to go in a different direction. That's what repent means. It means you agree with God. 
you agree with God, and then you make the necessary changes in your life to go another direction. Well, do that. That's the start. But even before that, you got to start praising. <laughs> praising God. That is the antidote to a spirit of heaviness. He says, I give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's Isaiah 61 verse 2. I give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I read today, it was a, I can't remember who said it, but I was just Googling and, and you know, be careful when you Google because there's a lot of, lot of opinions out there. You've got to know the word so you know, does it line up with God's word? Does it line up with, with what he is saying? Sometimes you'll read something, you're like, I've never heard that. And you might kind of back away from it. Go check it out, because it might be something you've never been taught. Well, today, where was I going with that one? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We were just talking about the ashes. Oh, well, forget it. But, um, oh, I know what it was. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So he was talking about, usually God says, take off something, like get rid of bitterness. Take it off and put on this. Well, he said, he, he thinks that the garment of praise, it's like a garment. It's like something you would put on and God gives it to you. You have to put it on. But once you put it on, then the spirit of heaviness will dissipate. It will leave. And so it's not like you can take off the spirit of heaviness and think about depression. So many people say, you just need to snap out of it. You need to just be happy. You've got all this stuff. You, you should not be depressed. You just need to put a smile on your face and snap out of it. You got too much to be thankful for. It doesn't work that way. I praise God that I've never really experienced depression, but I have a lot of friends that do. And I have interviewed so many people for our magazine, Victorious Living, who hurt. They live and have lived in darkness and they cry out to God and they have chemical imbalances and there there's there is that but there's also this this spirit attack of heaviness and you can't just take it off you can't just say you know what I am not going to have a spirit of heaviness today and let's just take it off no what you do is you put on the garment of praise you make that choice in the midst of your storm in the midst of your pain and what happens is that garment of praise gets on there and it just starts like I'm almost seeing like Pac-Man, you know, how it just eats those dots and um, can it eats it, it. I don't even know what made me think of that, but that's kind of what I see. It's like we put on that garment and it wraps around us and it just eats up. It, it just dissolves. It's in, in COVID-19 language. It's like, you know, spraying ourselves with, uh, with the uh, sand hand sanitizer. You're just, you're just putting it on garment of praise and it is just eating away at that virus of despair and heaviness. And so that is a choice that we have to do. God gives us the garment of praise, but we got to put it on. And when we do, the heaviness will start to vanish. It may take some time. It may be instant. So what do you, how do you praise? It starts with deciding in your heart and in your mind, I'm going to thank God for who he is. I may not feel like it, but I'm going to thank him. I'm going to thank him that he's good. Even though I don't feel like he's good right now, I'm going to thank him for it. I'm going to thank. That is a sacrifice of praise. God says, bring your sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. It's a sacrifice sometimes to say, God, I just praise you that, that you are so close. But you may not feel like he's close. I thank you, God, that you're in control. But in your heart, you may not even feel like he's in control, but you believe him. You believe him and you take him at his word. David was a man after God's own heart. He was a man who God just, he praised David. He's like, here is a man after my own heart. But he was not a perfect man. We think about him as David facing Goliath, this just young, ruddy guy, and he just faces this giant with courage. But then we see later in his life when he's a king and he's got problems in his home, he's got problems in his marriages, he's got all sorts of stuff going on. And you see so often he's talking to himself. He's like, oh, my soul, 
why are you so discouraged? Why are you downcast? We, we see in, in Proverbs that Solomon and, and David and different ones, you know, they talk about having the spirit of heaviness. Um, let me see where that was. Uh, Proverbs 17. If you have your Bible, look there for a second. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. See, David knew that. Solomon knew that. Proverbs 18, 14, the human spirit can endure a sick body, but who can bear a crushed spirit? David so many times went through a crushed spirit. And he's like, God, where are you? Where are you in this pit and this darkness? I feel like I am going under. I feel like the ropes or death are strangling me and holding me down. Yet, I will lift my eyes to the hill from whence my help comes from. I just brought together a whole bunch of verses from David. But that's what he's saying. He's like in this moment of despair, this heaviness. But then he says, but I'm going to lift my head. I'm going to look to, up to the hills, up to you, God, from whence my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I will praise you. I will thank you. I will remember what you've done. And as you're doing that, things happen. Go put some praise music on. You talk about a way to your soul to lift up your spirit, put it on. Put praise music on it and just start praising God. And things will happen. You're putting on the garment of praise. You're choosing to make that choice. And when you do that, you're losing the spirit of heaviness. And then you get free. You get free. You become a light. You become whole. You become able to persevere and to move forward with God. Today, like I told you, I, I just was very heavy, and I, I'm going to close out with this. Very heavy. I spent most of the afternoon crying just because of the loss of a dear loved one and, and all that their family's going, going through. I, I Love the Llewellyn family. If you're water skiers, and then you know about that situation, and it's just tragic. And when you when your friends call and they they're hurting, you take on that spirit of heaviness, and you hurt. And then, you know, last week I got a call from a sheriff. Actually, a sheriff showed up. I haven't even told my parents this. Showed up in North Carolina at our home when we were out of town last week, and it was um, a sheriff trying to find me on behalf of a sheriff from Boca Raton, Florida. And they had found a gentleman on the road, on, in, on the streets of Boca Raton, and he, he had died of a heroin overdose. And I was the name listed on his next of kin. How did he know me? Because he's one of our inmate families. His name's Jonathan. And Jonathan had on his license, in case of emergency, to call me and I got that call and to know one we had helped him get in rehab and I remember meeting him at the bus Greyhound bus station with a backpack and filled with the bible and clothes for my husband and different things and we were getting him to a rehab center because he had connected with our ministry victorious living while he was in prison and he was doing so good and he fell back in his addiction. That spirit of heaviness, I'm sure, came over him, and he was led into his addiction. He died on the street alone, without family, without friends. If someone's putting me down as their next of kin, and I've met them one time, they don't have anybody. And again, it was like a spirit of heaviness for this world. You, you, you put on the, the news, and it's just like, oh, my gosh. And you can just start feeling way down, and that's how I felt today. And I thought of this song by Casting Crowns, and the singer is Mark Hall, and he, he sings it. He's singing to his soul. He's singing to your soul is your emotions and your mind, and it's just, it's your mind. It's how you feel. It's, and that's what's going like this. You know, your spirit man is saved, and you've got this body, but your soul is, like, affected by everything around us, and that's the thing we've got to capture every day. And we've got to bring our soul in line with, with the Bible. And 
today I realized, you know, God, I've got a spirit of heaviness and some of my loved ones have a spirit of heaviness and, and I'm just asking you to lift it. And he reminded me how to lift it is the garment of praise to put on the praise. And, but that's going to be a fight. That is like, you don't just wake up one day and say, oh, I'm all good today. No, it's a fight and you've got to choose to fight. And so I kept singing this song by casting crowns, oh, my soul. And I, I came across the interview by Mark Hall, and he said all his, for decades, he's been this youth pastor. And he's the one that's always encouraging people. And one day he gets the call from the doctor, and he's got kidney cancer. And he said it was like his world came crushing down. And all of a sudden, he's the one usually encouraging people. He's like, I was down. <laughs> and and I didn't know what to do. And inside of my soul, in my mind, it was like this this stuff started coming down on me and fear. And he's like, you know, it was all good with someone else, but when it came and it was new to you, it wasn't new to other people, but it was new to you. He's like, it just, I wrestled. And so this song is him wrestling with his soul. Like David always, the spirit of heaviness is coming down on me. I'm going to wrestle with it. I'm going to, there's a great line in this song. It says, um, there's a place where fear has to face the God you know. There's a place where the spirit of heaviness has to go and start praising. You got to praise God and face the God you know. The God you know is faithful and kind and loving and good and is with you. And so I just started singing this song today, and I must have sang it at least 20 times. I know the guy in the office next to me must have thought, their Lord, because <laughs> One, it's in all sorts of keys, and it's in a man's voice, and, and I just, but it touched me. And I don't know all the words, but I just wanted to attempt to sing. This is for you, Michelle, because you've been after me to sing lately. Um, but I just pray that it, it will be a, a reminder of how you got to fight. You've got to fight. And it's really music, too, God's music that will help you. It, it does something to the soul. So this is called All My Soul. By casting crowns. Let me get a, a cup of water. <laughs> Y'all like McKay for Christy. <laughs> All righty. Or Aunt Cray Cray, as my, my nieces call me. So um, anyway, let's see if I can do this. Excuse me for looking down. Oh, my soul. Oh, how you worry, oh, how you're weary from fearing you lost control. This was the one thing you didn't see coming, and no one would blame you, though. If you cried in private, if you tried to hide it away, so no one knows, no one will see if you stop believing. And oh, my soul, you are not alone. There's a place where fear has to face the God you know. One more day, he will make a way. Let him show you how you can lay this down. Because you're not alone. Let them show you how you can lay it down. Lay, lay down your burdens. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, here and now, you can be honest. I won't try to promise that somehow it'll all work out. Because this is the valley, and even now, this is where I get lost. <laughs> Somebody's breathing on your dry bones. That's from Ezekiel where he's bringing life to your dry bones. It says, and there will be dancing. There will be beauty where beauty is ash and stone. This much I know. And oh, my soul. There's another key change. <laughs> you are not alone. There's a place where fear has to face the God you know. And one more day, he will make a way. 
let him show you how you can lay it down. And then he starts like arguing with himself. He goes, I'm not strong enough. I can't take any more. You can lay it down. You can lay it down. And my shipwrecked faith will never get me to shore. You can lay it down. You can lay it down. Can he find me here? Can he keep me from going under? Oh, my soul, you are not alone. There's a place where fear has to face the God you know. And one more day, he will make a way. Let him show you how you can lay your burdens down. Because you're not alone. You know, I, you are not alone. And that's the one thing the spirit of heaviness will try to convince you of, that you are isolated, you are alone. But God says, I am the great I am, and I am with you. And I have not forgotten you. And I see all that's going on around us. And I am in control. So don't buy into the lie that I am distant, that I am angry, that that I am nowhere to be found because I am right here. I am right here in your darkest moment and I am ready to lift you up. I'm ready for my light to shine into your spirit of heaviness and bring you into the spirit of joy, the spirit of peace and the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. God says he loves us. He is not. And he just says, praise me and remember who I am. Because I am a God who will not fail you. I'm a God who loves you, who sees you, who hears you. My hand is not too short to save you. Praise me. Thank me. Remember who I am and remember who you are. I am the God of heaven and earth, and you are my child. And everything I have, you have. Everything I own, you own. So start praising me and start taking authority over all that you see, for I have given you authority over all things, he says. And together, as you praise me, we will move forward through these dark times. And I will raise you up, and I will lift you up higher and higher and higher and higher, so high that you won't even know how you got there and you won't know how you're going to stay there and you won't, but for me. So keep lifting your voice, keep lifting your eyes, keep lifting your mind to me, your thoughts to me. Take captive every thought that comes your way and weigh it against the word and make sure that it's something that I would say the Lord says. He says, make sure it's something that, that I would say about you in this situation. If people in this world are saying there's no hope, that's not me, for I am hope. That's not God. If there's things coming on you that's bringing a spirit of fear, I do not give you a spirit of fear. I give you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. If there's confusion and there's doubt, I don't give you a spirit of confusion and doubt. I'm a God of order. I'm a God of power. So if you're feeling weak, come tap into my strength. Because I will make you strong. Those who trust in the Lord will mount up on wings as eagles and soar. I will give you my blood transfusion. And everything that's mine, all the strength I have becomes your strength. So don't quit. Don't grow weary. I'm going to close with this. I know I've gone a little bit over. I'm not going to quench the Holy Spirit when he gets going. And I think he just got going. <laughs> I don't know where all that just came from. Well, I do. But Hebrews 12, listen to this. We, this is our theme verse. Strip off every weight that slows you down, especially the sin that oh so easily trips you up. And tonight we've been talking about the spirit of heaviness. We're going to replace it with the garment of praise. And let us run with endurance. That, doesn't, that, that right there tells us it's not going to be an easy race. We're going to run with endurance. We're going to keep saying, hit it, God, hit it, God, hit it, God. And we're going to learn from our mistakes. 
We're going to run the race God has set before us. God has set a race before you and before me, and we got to run it with the endurance that God gives us. We don't have it on our own. We do this how? By keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. He endured dying on the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Let all the witnesses around you, like it says in Hebrews 11, that, that heroes of faith, go read about their lives. Look at the things that they face. What we're facing is nothing new. Satan has been after this world since the beginning of time, bringing confusion, bringing division. And God says, you start praising me, you, you start loving each other, you start getting unified, and this spirit of heaviness will lift off our nation. But it starts by lifting it off of ourselves, by putting the garment of praise on, and God will diminish and dis extinguish the, the, the spirit of heaviness. You resist the enemy and he will flee from you. I don't know what I'm looking for in here. I do know. Now, for real, we'll close. <laughs> Isaiah 61. Let's go back to the verse we were. God says, I'm going to, to all who mourn, you've been mourning, <laughs> you've been crying. He's going to give a crown of beauty for your ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. That's what we've been talking about. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks. I looked that up today. That is like this, this leader. It is a tree that is firm. It's magnificent. It's huge. It's something that people just stop and take notice of. It's a pillar. And you know what? It's going to be planted. God's going to plant you. God's going to plant you for this world to see. Why? So that you will be a display of his glory. If we're walking around with the spirit of heaviness on us, we cannot be a display of God's glory to this world. So let's, Let's cut loose. Let's get rid of the spirit of heaviness tonight with Jesus' help. Let's start praising him. Put on what he's given us. And I guarantee you things will start to change. Keep at it. Don't grow weary. And watch what God can do in your life. I love you so much. I know tonight has been powerful because I have sensed it. I know this is not me. This is God speaking through. He, he does it with with all of his people. He just wants us to be a vessel, to, to be a vessel of love, to be a vessel of encouragement, to be a vessel of, of joy. And so um, I just want to encourage you to be a vessel today. I, I'm trying myself to be a vessel everywhere I go. I'm just, I told Tim, I'm just pumping up the, the love. I'm going to be kinder. I'm going to be, as the voices get loud in this world, I'm going to get louder too with, with, not verbal love, but like action love. And people can't deny that. And the darkness cannot stop the light. So let's go overcome this darkness, overcome this spirit of heaviness with the love of Jesus and our praise and thanksgiving. Thank you for joining me. If there's anything that our ministry can do, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, P.O. Box, let's see, what I'm going to say, 352-478-2098. That's Pat Avery. And um, we will pray with you. If you've got a spirit of heaviness on you, reach out to us. We will pray for you. And um, when two or more are gathered in Jesus' name, whatever we pray for, it shall be done according to his word. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Your support makes things like this happen, helps us um, buy equipment. It also, uh, your support helps us publish magazines, Victorious Living, which help people all over this country know how to walk in victory, how to experience the victorious life, how to be free of all these things we've been talking about and so that they can run the race that God has called them um, to run, especially in the prison system. So go to vlmag.org and check it out. And uh, we just pray that you'll, uh, you'll join us in our efforts to deliver hope, the hope of Jesus to this world and invade the darkness of prison with the light of Jesus. God bless you and have a great night.